because somebody who's right next to you really uh, is uh, Dick Rosso. He's the former chair of the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, Dick, good to have you back on the program. Um, hey, and, you know, to last time you. we. You know, it's great to have you. You know, last time we talked, it was the day after the elections, right? And you were saying, look, this election was a wake-up call to the president to reach across the aisle and talk to business leaders. So are you satisfied with what he's done so far? Well, I'm very pleased that he's bringing together a very excellent cross-section of the American economy. And I think today marks the beginning of a new era of relationship between the leadership in Washington and the leadership in our economy. I'm also very interested to see what follows on today's meeting. He, the president has a meeting on Friday with labor leaders. I would love to see next a joint session with labor and the corporate community and bringing in perhaps a bit more diverse representation from the small business community. That's the triangular, if you will, component that will drive the American economy to success. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean, Dick, you know, what exactly are you looking for in that? Well, you know, you can't have a great corporate performance without great workers. So you have to have the unions involved in what's going forward in terms of government initiatives. S clearly you can't have, you know, just workers and leadership from the union. You have to have corporate and small business. It's an interwoven economy, Betty, and I think that this today is the first step in what will be, as we talked about the day after the election, this president moving to the middle. Dick, let me ask a quick question. There are so many issues on the agenda today and not a lot of time being spent. Would it have been more useful to both sides to just pick one topic like jobs? Well, I, I think that what you're suggesting, John, is the next meeting and meetings down the road right. and a more formalization of the process. I, I would encourage the president to create a standing committee that represents both labor, management, and small businesses. And as you say, let's approach it from a silo standpoint. How do you stimulate job creation? How do you deal with the unemployment issues? You, you can't, you know, the spread of issues for today, you know, great headlines, great topography, but, you know, more photos than substance. But there was, but, but Dick, you know, there was all this talk we had with um, Dean Baker as well as Al Hunt that uh, there needs to be more clarity on the tax front, that if you had a bit more uh, clarity on the corporate tax front, that maybe that's when you would start getting some hiring. Well, look, uh, corporate America is sitting on a trillion dollars worth of cash. Now, with the, the agreement the president reached on tax policy this week, you get a, a greater certainty. But going forward, you're right, Betty. I mean, the corporate community is not going to start to make investments that are multi-year and, in some cases, multi-decade type commitments unless they know what's going to happen three years out, five years out, ten years out. Now, you know, you'd be a fool to say that Washington is going to tell you what's going to happen ten years out. But there's got to be greater certainty right. than just the next two years. Uh, what do you expect or what do you want on the agenda above all else today? Today I want there to be a reconciliation of this we-they that has seemed to really infect the relationship of the White House with the business community. It is not a we, they, it is a we. We, if this economy is to succeed, it's because the leadership of corporate America is going to get behind this president. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent, whatever your political persuasion, you have an interest in America succeeding and you've got, in essence, the responsibility to get behind this president.